Hey there, everybody, and welcome. I'm Chris Woolley, and we've got another episode of Let's Develop for you. And today is going to be a lot of fun. We've got Corey McDonald, who's going to be doing epic senior portraits. And oh, wow, you're just going to be blown away by the talent that this man has. Holy cow. So if this is your first time tuning in to Let's Develop, welcome. This is a webinar series brought to you by American Color Imaging. And basically every other week, so every two weeks, twice a month, uh, we bring in some of the top photographers across the nation and they just share some information. It's an hour long program, free. We just have fun and uh, share and elevate our craft as a whole. So a uh, big shout out to American Color Imaging for uh, help making this happen. If you did happen to miss the last episode, we had Karen McCall on, and she went over Photoshop painting from drab to fab, uh, so you can learn a little bit about uh, Photoshop painting. And that replay is live on ACI's website, so you can go on and check that out. That's acilab.com slash let's dash develop. All right. So now it's time where we can uh, learn from Corey. And uh, Corey is crazy, crazy talent, as I mentioned before. He's a master photographer, photographic craftsman, master artist, CPP. Like, he, this man's accolades just go on and on. Uh, he's from Alabama, small town Monroeville, which was the backdrop of To Kill a Mockingbird. And, uh, uh oh, are you having trouble hearing me, Corey? It, it, it sounds like an Eminem song on the radio. An Eminem song on the radio. So we're getting an echo? A little bit. It's breaking up real bad. Okay. Uh, we will we'll get that one uh, figured out. Uh, try to ignore me. We'll turn it over. I can hear you great. I'm going to finish a little bit of an introduction, and then uh, we'll turn it over. So uh, Corey's been a professional photographer since 2014, specializes in high school seniors, families, children, and business commercial stuff, and just recently been getting into the uh, fine art paintings as well. Uh, he loves to watch uh, some TV series, got nine of them that he's a uh, favorite on. Uh, he's reading, writing, Marvel cinematic gossip, and uh, likes to hang out on the farm doing cotton, peanuts, and uh, just general photography. So uh, Corey... It's officially uh, all you now. You want to share some awesome info with us? Yeah. Yep. Can you hear me? <laughs> we can hear you, yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Hi, I'm, I'm Corey. I, I couldn't hear that last bit, so I'm... Uh, I, I was just sure bragging on you. Do I? I was just bragging about you. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Um. I'll play a short video uh, that kind of shows a lot of the, the work that I've done. And um, the, the video, I think it's still formatted for Iowa. So it's got a little message for Iowa at the end. Well, um, we like the folks in Iowa. I can pause it there. <laughs> uh, so that's a lot of the work that I've done. Um, it's what I'm most known for. Um, but uh, I'm going to skip on down to some of this. Um, I'm not good at business. I'm, I'm completely honest about it. Um, I love the art part. So if anybody has any questions about the art or the uh process or anything like that i'm more than happy to answer but if you've got questions about how i run my business um you are talking to a brick wall <laughs> i'm the one who asked those questions uh but I'll, I'll go through some of the images uh real quick this one uh is one of my favorites um and uh this was uh everybody asked me how'd you do that i'm like he literally jumped up i told him to kick a ball a, a fake ball he had to pretend and he landed on my couch cushions. Um, and that's how we got it. So this is uh, 
This one right here was the first time I ever tried anything like that where there's debris coming at you. And um, I really, I just kind of ran with it. It ended up being one of my favorites. And that was just, just a, like a playing around image. Um, uh, I think everybody knows it. And this young lady is one of my favorites to work with. Um, she is an all around athlete. She ran track for the first time this year and um, is, <laughs> number one in the state <laughs> she just does everything great um this is uh this was actually both of these were made with smoke brushes um this is also smoke and i, I turned it into kind of like a superpower trails um where she was moving uh this is a combination of smoke and just placement this this is uh one of my favorite montages and this is my new powder brushes um I'm having a lot of fun with that, but uh, these are some of the new seniors. This one actually has been painted, um, and I can pull that up for a closer look, but I love, this is the work I love doing. Uh, this is a studio sample montage. They didn't actually buy this. I just put it together because I thought it would be cool to hang in the shop. It is very cool. <laughs> Uh, this was uh, smoke brushes that I turned into kind of a um, power lights or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what you call it. I just call it superpower. Um, Are there some Marvel kind of influences there. there? I don't know. Well, you can't see it, but there's like five Marvel posters of just Endgame <laughs> on my wall over here. Oh. I'm trying to click. There we go. So are these um, brushes was, that you've created yourself, Corey? Yes, I, I I started, I used um, other people's brushes for a long time, and um, they're great. I don't, I, you know, if, if you've got a favorite, you, you go for that. I need to turn this on silent. Um, you go for that, but I wanted something that was mine and unique to me, and um, so that's what I did. I, I went out and I made my own brushes, and um, the, the easiest one is probably smoke. Uh, the hardest one was water. Water has to have at least three people helping you do it. Um, <laughs> no, no, I take that back. Fire is the easiest. Fire is the easiest because easiest you don't have to light it. Um, <laughs> That's always helpful, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. this one, look at that detail. Yeah, this one took me probably about 10 minutes. This, I, you know, I, I'm, I've kind of got this down to like a 10 to 15 minute thing for the simple images. So this was probably about 10 minutes. I just put him in there, did my uh, processing, dropped in one of my lights and put a little fog in the back and that was it. The main part of this image is uh, thou shalt not steal. Um, that's his favorite thing about his helmet. So that's what we you know, uh, wanted to uh, really see in the image. And then he's got his montage. So is it so, primarily sports portraits that you're doing? Uh, primarily, yes. It's not the only thing. Um, today, I'll bring Reagan's session over today. This just came out of Lightroom, so absolutely nothing has been done to any of these images. Literally, my computer is still running a little slow from the export. Um, so I'll just scroll down. Yeah. Where do you get so, your inspiration, um, such as uh, having the cinematic aspect? As a, as a, I missed that last bit. Oh, like I said, it's got such a cinematic look. Where, where are you inspired by? Um, well, when I was, uh, God, how old was, it? oh my God, it's been 20 years. Um, when I was 12, I was introduced to fantasy films for the first time in my life with the Lord of the Rings. It was the first book I ever read. You got to understand I had a second grade reading level when I picked that book up and it took me almost two years to finish reading it. By the time I was done, I started reading Harry Potter and all these other things and getting into fantasy movies and superhero movies and things like that, and following them. And I just really like the imagery. If you've ever looked at, um, let's just go to Google. Um, I'm on, I refer to this all the time. So if you ever look at, well, crap, we got to find us a good image. There we go. 
So if you, well, come on, guys, give me something to work with. <laughs> We're going down a rabbit hole. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> so if you ever look at these posters, you'll see so many colors. I love Marvel for that because they use so much, so much light. Um, and it just, it really just draws your eye. I mean, when you see this, you're just immediately, I'm going to go watch this movie. Um, same thing with, uh, I don't know if y'all can tell that, but it knew what I wanted to type as soon as I put Thor had poster at the end of it, and everything below that was poster. Um, so if you look at these, you know, same thing. Look at the look at the light. And so I would just that's why there's so many posters on the wall. They're not there just because I'm a fan of the movie. They're there so I can always look at it and go, I need to work on this a little bit more to kind of bring it that cinematic quality to it. Um, I love movies. Um, that's not, I don't know if that's a real poster or not. I don't think it is. But, you know, if you go look at any of Marvel's posters, they're all going to be just like this. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of where I, I do draw my inspiration from are, these fantasy movies. Um, my one of my favorites, Black Panther. Uh, yeah, it was so clean. There's not you didn't have any of that color, but you're still looking at it, going, "Wow, wow!" And there's so many things to find in there. Um, you know, this one actually is my favorite. So that's kind of that, that's kind of where I pull that inspiration from. This is very cool. <laughs> Getting all sorts of fun comments here. People like your inspiration. Uh, oh, good. Um, and it it shows in my competition images. I'm not going to pull that up because that's not what everybody tuned into. But it shows in my competition images too. Um, that because I do have a fantasy theme to all of my comp images. Cool. Well, you want to let us uh, peek behind the veil and see how you do some of this cool stuff? Heck yeah! All right. So I've already got an image uh, ready to roll. If I can get to it, there it is. My, little, my second window over here is blocking all my stuff. All right. So this is, I think, everybody's favorite. I'm not sure. Um, but this was shot, if I can pull up the actual green. It was shot in the lobby of the gym. And on this one, I'm just using a regular um, 10 by 10 green back. Actually, I think it's an 8 by 10 green background. Um, there's no hair white. It's just my two strips and the main light, which is over here. And uh, I had to really get him into it. Whenever I've got them in front of me and I'm needing them to give me real emotions, I will put them on the spot like really quick and tell them, you're in the game. You've got to scream, 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 you know, and, I, and I'll scream with them. Problem is we couldn't do that because there was a basketball game going on in the gym. So <laughs> everybody was like, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'll I'll go through this real quick. Um first I will I always start with gray, but I'm gonna skip some of what I do here. Um let's go right into this. So I'm gonna use uh, do you use a, a green screen for everything. Not everything. Um, sometimes where on uh, where is Hudson? So Hudson had his school colors are green and yellow, which are terrible when it comes to shooting on green screen. So I had to shoot him on gray. Um, but it, the extraction process is pretty much the same. So. I think I'm going to show you guys the powder because I'm super excited about it because I just finished them. Um, 
So they're pretty big. Uh-oh, I'm not 100%. So they're stamped. So you can go in there. I'm working on um, seeing about making dynam- more dynamic brushes. But for powder, it's really just stamps anyway. So we go in here to the glove, and we got the ball in here. And I want it to look like the ball has just impacted the glove. So I'll, I'll put my little, I'll put one there, and then I'll come in with a new layer. And we'll find a good one, this one. So now I've got two uh, powder layers that are going in either direction. And I, what I mean by that is you can see the tail going this way. And then over here, you can see the tail going that way. So I'll come in here and I'll put my brightest spot right there and I'll merge those two, put a layer mask on there. I'm gonna grab a soft round and come in here. Normally I'll use my um, pen, but when I'm when I'm just kind of generally doing something like this, I'll use my mouse. Because sometimes my pen wants to uh, act up. But I'll use it right now and turn on. All right, so if I pull back, that just looks off, like the ball was just put there. And that's not what we want. So I'll come in here and I will mask a little bit back over that. Uh -oh, wrong thing. Just to kind of blend it into the scene a little bit better so that we can still tell there's a ball there, but it doesn't look like it was just put there. So now I'm looking at this and going, well, you know, that's, that's kind of bright. So I've got my own little style over here that I'll just click. And now it's kind of dirt colored. Um, and I'm not sure if we got time for me to go through the whole thing, but. Probably not, but uh, we'll take the highlight <laughs> reel. But like I will, I'll do stuff like this. And then I can apply that little action or that uh, style. Now, bear in mind, this is an image that I've already done and worked up and finished. So usually when I do that, I'm like, I don't want to work on this image again. <laughs> so if, 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 if it feels kind of like it's not a final thing, I apologize. So there are like so many different, I've got little poofs that I can put in here for his arm. Uh, right here. I'll just stamp that in there and bring it down. And sometimes if, if you want to go non-destructive, you can mask it. Me, I kind of know. I've been doing it long enough. I kind of know how I want it. And um you know, sometimes if I feel like his face is really red, now his face is actually naturally red, that red, actually. Um, but if you, this is a neat little trick. If you create a new hue and saturation layer and you clip it to them, you just take the slider and go slightly to the right. And it kind of levels out his skin tone. But you want to be careful because now look, his skin has then turned a little yellow. So we'll go over here and just mask some of it off. Is it working? Uh, no, that's a racer. <laughs> Y'all got to stay on top of me sometimes. I do have a question from Tristan wanting to know if you can show us what that layer style is that you're doing. What do you, when you say you're playing with your own layer style. Yes, all of these are my own layer styles. Uh, a couple of these are not, but this particular one is basically, I just went in here and embossed it a little bit and then put a tan color overlay on it. So just adding some texture and depth to it as well as color? It, it, it's uh, the bevel and emboss. There's no texture on it. It just give, it gives it that look 
So if we go in, it just gives it that three-dimensional look. That's quite clever doing that as a, uh, a layer style. Um, you're breaking up again. Uh-oh. I was saying that's clever. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but if I didn't want to do powder, I'm going to remove everything. And I said, okay, I just want to do smoke. Smoke is my favorite. Um, I'm sure other people have figured that out by now. It's quick. So if I go in here to smoke, I just pull this one out. This is my favorite one to use. I just whoop, whoop, whoop. Just the opacity. Whoop. I do make noises when I do stuff. And I'll come up here in front of them and I'll go, ooh. So we're starting to get more questions. Uh, can you do the sound effects again? Corey, can you do, do the sound effects again? Oh, okay. Hang on. I got to get in the zone. Whoop. 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 <laughs> I love it. Uh, Christy wants to know, uh, where do you get the backgrounds and smoke things like that? Where do I get what? The backgrounds and smoke brushes. Literally taking pictures of smoke. And it's a certain way. This is my purple elephant. Um, so it's, I, I can't, you know, I can't divulge the whole process. But I will say that it's a certain way you have to do it to go in and create the, um, the smoke. Because otherwise you're going to end up with something that's just like literally haze in your image. Um let me let me pick one of these. So this is these are my tendrils here, and it's a certain way you got to go in and make that. You can kind of see it's a little noisy there. Let me pull up a different one. Go down here. Usually the one, my favorite ones are down here. So like I've got this little bit, and I'll use these for different things. You know, I can just stamp that back there, and it'll look like it's rising up off of this back. Um, if you've ever been to a game where the guys are just covered in sweat and they're hot and they're they're tired and they're just burning up, they've been running and it's really cold and you can see the steam rising off of them. That's kind of what I go for sometimes. So I'll come in here and get a good one. We use this one. I don't use it a whole lot. So I'll come in here and I'll be like, get it around him a little bit. So I'll only do it on the skin because that's really where all the steam's rising up at a game. Um, then, you know, just to kind of give it a little bit of a, an effect, Come in here. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, no, that'll work. That'll work. You know, you can literally do anything with just the color balance. You want to go green, you want to go a bit more magenta. Bring that back a little bit. Do you have a preferred lens to use? Do I have what? A preferred lens. Oh, um, not really. I'll go back and forth between 2470. I think somebody asked um, how this was shot on Facebook earlier today. And it was 24 millimeters in the uh, studio. And actually, I don't recommend that unless you are somebody who can do the cutout um, meticulously because... This was, I'm, I'm trying to find it right now. 
This was shot differently. It was shot angled up. And where is that? I literally can't fi find the actual green screen image. Um, that's simple. Yeah, the extractions can be a bit difficult. Here we go. All right, so this is the original green screen image of that. Um, so as you can see, if we go up here, his head is in the black of my ceiling. So that was all literal manual cutout. Um, so if, if you're somebody who's wanting to do a quick job, I don't recommend you shooting at 24 millimeters. <laughs> uh, but this one was probably 100 millimeters. Um, no, I take that back. I take that back. I can tell you because I got super close to him to get it. It was, it might be 20. No, it was 70. It was 70. So you're all I over the place. I, I, yeah, I'm all over the place. I mean, it, it, it really depends because when I have like my, my, ele the elements that I use for like the ground, and things like that. Um, I shot those super wide because I do have a process to where I can bring them and make them look like they weren't shot at 15 millimeters. <laughs> um, I won't, that's, that's also another one of my purple elephants, but this was shot at 15 millimeters. Um, actually, maybe it wasn't. No, it was shot at 45, which can work. But if you go and put something that you shot at 200 millimeters on top of something you shot at 45, you're going to have some perspective issues. Um, so that actually takes some time to fix. Um, and this is, this might be the one that I actually used for that final image of him um, here. Do you have a preferred aperture that you use? Yes. Uh, for green screen, I don't do anything less than eight. Um, I, I'll go up to about eleven, depending on what I'm doing. If I if like when I'm at a school or something doing volume, and I have to be really close, I'll shoot at like f eleven or or thirteen, because the longer that focal length, the more quickly they're going to fall out of focus. Um, so I have to up that aperture. If I'm really far away, I'll be about, you know, F8 because they're going to be in focus anyway. Um, so that it, it kind of varies, but I never do anything below F8. Okay. Um, in fact, today when I shot Reagan, we did a uh, dive image that I had to shoot at F14 because I was shooting this at 24 millimeters. She was, her focus was falling off right around her butt. And so her feet were falling out of focus. Her hand and her face were all in focus. Um, but everything back here was going out. And that becomes a challenge when you're cutting it out, especially because she's not on the green screen here. So I have to go in and cut that out manually. So she's out of focus. Then I have to feather the selection. And I hate doing that. Um, I want something easy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> for your uh, backgrounds do you make the background like the baseball player yes um this where we go? yeah this is like uh, this is these are my lights from a base local baseball field and all i did was go in and just pretend that they were on i stamped some lights in there um and this is one of my skies i think i showed you this guy actually um earlier and I just turned it black and white and made it look yep. like a storm. <laughs> One of the nice sunsets. Um, yeah. Now, these, the, this particular scene where you're seeing all these dirt, that's not mine. Um, but it, I, I did modify it a little bit. But that's why I made the powder brushes because I don't want to have to use somebody else's stuff. When I, when I show somebody this, I want, them, I want to say that I made this from scratch. You know, um, just, a, just a personal preference. That doesn't mean you have to go out and make your own stuff if you don't want to. But just me personally, I want to be able to look at it and say, I made that from scratch. Um, 
So I can't say that on this image that I made it from scratch. Um, which one can I do that on? How many uh, composites do you do per session on average? Uh, that's a good question. I, I recently redefined how I do that. So if you want a wall portrait, this will be a good example right here of one that I would make for a wall portrait. So they couldn't get an eight by 10 of that. They have to get a wall portrait of this. Then they can get an eight by 10, but they have to have a wall portrait with it. For something like this, y'all saw how quick I did that. I don't care what size you get of that. I mean, I want you to get a wall portrait of it. Um, but something like that where it's quick and it's not a lot of time consumption there, um, you can get whatever you want to. So typically I'll do about five to 10 per session. Um, some people come in and all they want is sports. It's today they drove four hours. So I demanded that they shoot more than sports. Um, but today's session is a prime example of that. They came to me because of sports. So you'll see there's a lot of repetition in here because I was shaken. And so I, when I'm, when I'm shooting and I'm shaking, I take a lot. So, that, so that when I go in, I can be like, Oh, okay. I got one in focus or one's not in motion. Um, Again, this is another example of something shot in 24 millimeter that I don't recommend you do. This is going to be an easy one, though. Um, let's see. Let me go to 2021. Um, trip. So, well, that may not be the one. TK, that's right. Do you have any of your uh, earlier images as you're developing your style to see how, how you've grown as an artist and how things change? Maybe give the um, rest of us a little bit of hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give me a minute to do that. <laughs> um, so this is one that I made from scratch. All this is smoke. Even, well, I take that back. That's not smoke. And that's not smoke. Uh, but everything else is. So that looked like he was kicking up dirt. Um, what was the original question about the environment? No, yeah, oh, just yeah. How many? How many? How, how do you you make them, or do you sell them, or what do you have to do? Uh, to the custom stuff, stuff I so do cool. not sell. Yeah, the custom stuff I do not sell um, because that's that's me. You know, that's that's my style. That's my that's uh, my that's my people come to me. Um, but, uh, let me drag this over here so you don't see my organizational skills and the lack thereof. Um, so like, here we go. I got to find a, this is a school, so I got to find a kid that I know. I'm not going to pull up some random kid. Um, so I, I'm going to find a child that I know I'm allowed to bring up. Um, I, we, okay, so let me explain that while I'm looking. Um, we have, this is, okay, this is my cousin. So we have the worst, uh, Highway 84 is one of the biggest human trafficking highways in the nation. And it comes right, it's actually one mile from my house. Um, so privacy is a big thing. So I only pull up kids who I know. Um, so this is my cousin. She didn't like this picture, but I don't care. <laughs> so this one I would sell. Um, it's a drag and drop. It's easy to do, but this one is a custom job. This took me probably two hours, two or three hours. So this isn't something that I would sell. This is something that is unique to that particular senior, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that makes perfect I, sense. Let's see. I do have... I only have one on mine right now. It's kind of pitiful. Um, and this so is on your, have, your website that you're at now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do have this one for sale, and it's um, it's a good one machine. So it's customizable with color. 
I will pull up some random kid on this one. Um, so it's customizable with color. Um, what was I doing? Yeah. Uh, does anybody else want to see some of the brushes? Yeah, show us more cool stuff. Yeah. I'll pull up Jackson. Yeah. Do you have now any seniors, uh, they don't uh, epic have... stories? Epic stories? Yeah, from when you're doing senior shoots? Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know about epic. I will say this one did not like getting wet. Uh, this might be before. Let me look. Yeah, this is before. See, he's out of focus there. I have that. I have that issue. I'll be. I'll be shaking. <laughs> okay. Gotta get so that. He did not like getting wet. Yeah, he did not like getting wet. We took him outside, got him under the water hose, so it would look like he was sweating. Um, but I did that so that when I do the rain, um, ooh, there's one I cannot pull up. Okay. Um, some of this is in competition, so I can't pull it up. Um, so this is with the rain. So when I put the rain in there, you know, it would, it would look like he was actually wet and not, you know, completely dry, but somehow there's water dripping off of him. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind if you're going to if you're going to do rain or water or anything like that is that you need to wet your subject um, so that it actually follows through and isn't just like some like if I tried to put uh, rain on this image, everybody's going to know he wasn't wet. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. So you're kind of planning ahead for your your images. Yes, yes, of course, uh, and, and I'll ask them that too. I'll be like, "Hey, uh, let's go get let's go get wet." Um, but if they don't want to do it, I'm like, "Okay, I'll skip the water part." Uh, today I did not get her wet because she's a girl and she had done her hair and she didn't, you know, I I didn't even bring that up. Um, I'm now I can do that with her helmet it, when she had her helmet on when she was batting. I can put water in that. Um, because her hair is hidden. Uh, who did I put more? Yeah, so like Kylie had her hair pulled back really tight. Um, so I could get away with it there. Where is she at? Here she is. So I didn't wet her. But as you can see, her hair was pulled back really tight. So that means when, when a girl's hair, when anybody's hair is wet, it's going to get that tightness look to it. It's going to be matted to you. And it was already done like that. And I was like, hey, I'm just going to have fun with it. So I threw some water in there on her and made it look like rain. How much, how do you know if it's too wet or is there such thing? <laughs> There's no such thing. <laughs> um when I when the emails go out to seniors, uh, they go out 21, 14, and seven days before their session. It's got a reminder in there to bring a towel, um, especially if we're going to a um, creek for their session, because most likely I am pulling up. Most likely you're going to get wet in the creek. Grace. Um, and we get completely we get completely all the way in to the water so they know beforehand to come prepared for it but sometimes people do say we don't want to get wet we don't we don't want to do that which is fine it doesn't hurt my feelings i tell everybody you know you do you boo boo <laughs> Do you have any like uh, stock poses or um, action sequences that you like to do that just work with everybody? Not really. Is everything custom thing, unique? Or? Yeah, not, 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 the color is not unique. Um, for example, my style is all over the place. So with Mary Grace, I'll pull hers up. She told me she wants to look like a model, a fashion model. So when she came in, it was completely out of my out of my wheelhouse to do. 
but we did it anyway. So that style mixed with uh, something like this, two totally different looks. So each, each uh, color option is very unique to them because it's totally different to what you see here, which is totally different to what you see here. So with, you know, there's, there's no one action, subset of actions that do it. I will say over here in my actions, um, I'll do like, uh, I'll create own little folder. And if I've got a series of images that were shot in the same place, using the same settings and the same light and all that, and I want the images to, that, that series of images to be cohesive, I will record what I do to this image and then play the action to the, to the whole series, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that they look, so that they look, you know, um, consistent. Cons yeah, consistent. But only for images that were shot outside or images like that one, that high key image, only for stuff like that. Because when you're doing this, um, it's very customized. Um, and, you know, you're going in and doing little, little minuscule things to his out, to his clothes to his arm, to his face, um, to his glove, to his shoes, even. What other questions would you Yeah, have? what made you get just into to seniors as your niche? That's a good that's a good question. Uh, if you if you're in inside the box, uh, you may have seen it last week when we shared our senior portraits. Um, I didn't have pictures growing up. In fact, if you go over to my parents' house and you walk in, there are literally pictures of people we don't know hanging on the walls, like historical paintings. And I'm not going to get into what's in the paintings, but they, <laughs> God love my parents. They think that they own some historical piece of art that's worth, you know, thousands of dollars. And really it's a reprint. So it's worth probably $10. Um, and they've got all that hanging on the wall. Nothing of the family. Nothing of uh, my aunts and uncles or my cousins or me. Uh, you might find a five by seven hidden behind the door on the table, but that's it. So for me, I was never, um, and you know, what? I'm going to pull up the slide and I'm not going to go over the slide because if I do, I'll choke up. Um, but right up here at the top, you'll, you'll see why. Um, so like, I've always had issues with how I view myself and I've always wanted something cool, you know, to look at, to say, that's me, you know, I, I, that, that's me. I look cool there. And um, I know a lot of these kids, they don't have that. Um, they have the regular pictures like smile for mommy, <laughs> but you know, they, I want them to have something memorable, a memorable experience. And seniors was just kind of the way to go with that. Um, I, recently, I decided to say, okay, I'm going to do teens and seniors. I'm going to bundle those together. So if you want a senior session um, and you're a teenager, but you're not a senior, you can still book it. You know, it's for teens and seniors. Um, but that was just kind of the way to go, especially because it's their last year of high school. And around here, there's not really any opportunities for kids, um, which is why you'll see a lot of my work is repetitive as far as the sport goes, because it's basically football, baseball, basketball. And for girls, it's basically softball. Um, there's no other opportunities for them around here. So when it's their senior year of high school, this is it, you know, and, and that's kind of how I geared into that is I kind of looked at it that way. And <laughs> I'll be honest, every time today, even the mom cried on the softball images that we made because in the back of her mind, she's like, this is the last time she's going to do this. <laughs> and I'm like, I live, I live off the tears of sad mothers. <laughs> um, but that being said, Every now and then you'll have a uh, golden goose. And my golden goose 
is Jayla. Jayla, and I, this is the one that I told y'all uh, is number one in the state and every sport she picks up, she just excels at. So this is Jayla. This is Jayla. And this is Jayla. Now, what you see now are three sports because she hasn't, you know, this was her first year with track and she's number one in the state. <laughs> I mean, everything she picks up just turns to gold. Um, she got a full ride scholarship to Ole Miss to play softball. So every now and then you'll have that one who's just kind of stands out of the crowd a little bit. But uh, for the most part, most of these other kids, um, they don't have that opportunity. So for them, this is it. This defines who they are for their senior year. And that's kind of that's kind of there's a long walk for a short drink of water, but that's kind of why I uh, specialize in seniors. That's very cool. Uh, can you tell us about how you get the sharpness in your images? <laughs> That's going to be another one of those process questions. Um, so uh, this particular image is a little bit over sharpened, but that's because he was moving. So I had to do some stuff. Uh, but for the most part, I don't really ever mess with sharpness. Unless, unless it's like motion and I have to go in, I'll use like sharpen AI from Topaz and I'll do that motion. It'll fix that motion blur in there. Um, but other than that, I really don't mess with it that much. Wow. <laughs> you definitely have some cool work here. Uh, so uh, you'd mentioned to me earlier that you had a, a special for those that were watching on some of yes. your uh, cool swag. Can you tell me about that? Yes. So... If you go to that website right here, gourmetdollphotography.com slash four dash photographers, you'll find all my brushes. Um, you know what? Why don't I just go there? I just realized that the code is not on that picture. <laughs> um, so if you go here, you can, you can uh, buy all the brushes or you can buy just a couple of them, try them out. You know, um, let's say you want to go get some water. Just add that to your cart. You'll type in May 22. And I just put that into chat too. So if you click the little present icon, you can get that uh, a link to his website, take you right there, as well as having the uh, uh, the code for you. And it'll be emailed out yeah, to everyone as well. It's 15% off the entire store through May 31st. Um, and down here, you'll see the uh, powder brushes kind of what I used here. These are brand new. They literally went online today. I literally put them online today. <laughs> um, and uh, if you're, if you're, if brushes just aren't your thing and you're, you're more painted, I do have some backgrounds here um, that are available. There's 17 of them. And, uh, that one sports template. Um, it looks like everybody's going to my website right now. So that email list that everybody's everybody's filling out that's for my that's for my portrait clients. <laughs> um, but if y'all want to fill it out, cool. everybody's just uh, in love with you, Corey. You got some cool stuff. Well, thank y'all. I hope y'all. I, I find it always interesting. Everybody always says, um, "We love your accent." I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> I love y'all's accent. <laughs> Everybody sounds different. Um, but uh, as far as the brushes go, you can get the fire and smoke together. You can get the fire, water, and smoke together. Or you can get all four together. And then you can go back and say, well, I just want one. I just want the fire. Um that's cool. Everything is individualized and bundled. So you got options. Cool. I think you got people stalking you too. 
<laughs> so be sure to, to check those out and uh, support Corey and all his uh, creative endeavors that he's got going on because he's going only going up from here. Uh, so I do have some uh, uh, prizes and giveaways uh, from ACI. So we're going to take a quick break uh, from that, and then we'll come back in just a second uh, and uh, have some parting thoughts with Corey. Uh, but I uh, do want to let you know about a special that American Color Imaging has going on uh, on Background Town. So if you're needing some uh, custom backgrounds, uh, physical ones in real life, uh, this is an amazing deal. You can get half off. Uh, make sure you write down that code, and it's good through the end of June. Um, so feel free to share that as well. Um, and it's going to be coming to you via the email as well. So you've got that. So uh, thanks, ACI, for... Uh, uh, doing that. I do also want to let you know about some upcoming uh, programs that we have because we've got a fun lineup. Holy cow. So uh, up next, we've got Chris Paulus doing restorations. We've got Christy Steves going to be looking at the art of storytelling. Jeff Johnson's going to take us in through the soul of a landscape. And Justin Tedford's going to be looking at passion projects. Uh, so a lot of great content coming up. You'll be able to register for those. And uh, I've got some prizes to give away now, too. So up first, we've got a $50 lab credit to American Color Imaging. So uh, let's see who our winner is with our fun wheel. So we got that spinning. Carolyn, just writing that down so we can make sure that uh, you get your $50 credit. And uh, up next, we've got a $75 lab credit. So let's see who our winner is on that one. Everybody likes free money. And that is Libby. Awesome. And now we've got the grand prize on that one, $100 lab credit. Let's see who the winner is on that one. And it's spinning. And Timothy. Congratulations on those. Uh, so that will be added to your account. Um, if you guys do have ideas for future episodes, things that you'd like to learn about, uh, speakers that you'd like to see more of, email me, reach out, reply to an email that I'm sending you. That's how we come up with the content for these. I listen to you. I track down people and I play that middleman so that uh, we can get some amazing <laughs> talent coming on. All right, Corey, we are at the tail end of today. Any parting thoughts for us or someone that's uh, getting started in the senior business? Did I lose you? Am I breaking up? <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Any, um, any parting thoughts for us, for those that are getting into senior photography? I would say con connection is probably the most important Um aspect of high school seniors and by that i'm not somebody who gets on there and does reels and tiktoks and all that stuff online um i probably should but i don't have time for it and to be honest i don't i don't really have anything interesting to put on there um but the in-person connection um getting to know them know who they are, what their favorite color is, what their what music they listen to. None of that's really going to matter for you in the long run, but it's going to build that connection. So even if you're not at the level to where you can create stuff like this, you can still be memorable for that senior um, just by, you know, engaging them in conversation and asking them what they want. Um, it doesn't, you know, mama's paying for it fine, but don't forget to ask what they want. Um, because otherwise you're just somebody with a camera. That's some really, really good advice. The, those genuine connections there. Yes. And, uh, where are you going to be speaking at next? Um, 
I'm not supposed next. I'm not supposed to say just yet. Oh, okay. Um, so Classified top to secret. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just get to the one that's uh, official is uh, Sync uh, 22, and I cannot tell you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Sync got moved um, to a different location. I know where the location is, but I cannot tell you yet. Uh, but just be on the lookout for that. It's really exciting where it's going to be. Um, but that's where I'll be next. At um, sync. This- Perfect. So we can keep track of it. Thank you so very much, Corey. You've been an amazing guest and shared a ton of great information and some really, really nice motivation with us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got a flood of comments saying that everybody just enjoyed your presentation and, uh, had a really great time. So thank you. Well, thank you. Um, I always freak out about that part. <laughs> was that, did I do good? You did good. You did good. So, well, thank you. Thank All you. right. Well, have it. a great night, everybody. And thanks again for joining us. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.